I have an equivalent is a way of remodeling and changing the components of a circuit. And they have to be all passive components, resistors, resistors, capacitors, inductors, such that it's written in a much simpler framework. Turns out that any circuit component that you want, right, any fraction or any component of a circuit can basically be summarized as a voltage source and an impedance. This is the Thevenin equivalent. And so when you're trying to model source and load, and you have all these components scattered everywhere, it's extremely useful to try to break it down such that you, you leave off your load and then you model everything down as just this. And so you end up with two components, right? An amplitude and a phase offset and a reactance, uh, sorry, a, a resistance and a reactance, a complex, a complex impedance that tells you everything about how the source is behaving. It's an extremely useful simplification. To, to figure it out, let's look at a couple simple examples. Let's say we have battery, we have resistance, and we have another resistance, let's say it falls off, oops, it goes in parallel. And then in series, we have another resistance. And let's say this is our off load. And we've got positive and negative here. Oh, I'm sorry, I did it backwards. Here we go, much better. So we have positive and negative here. And so we have some voltage and we have R1, R2, R3. Right? We collapse this set of resistors to find the Thevenin equivalent and model it as just one resistor that's being pushed into the load. And the way you do that is by dropping out the load, dropping out the battery, and then figuring out what the equivalent voltage would be. And you can sort of make sense, right? If you were to look at this from here and here as just these terminals, and you were to figure out what this looked like, well, you've got one resistor, you've got two in parallel. And so, you know, R Thevenin here is going to be R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3. I'm not gonna solve it, but that's how you would do it. The really lovely thing about this is that this applies for everything. This applies not just for resistors, but also for complex impedances. So if you have a more difficult or challenging model, so say like you have a voltage source that's AC now, and you have a capacitor, you have an inductor, and you have a resistor, oops. That's a resistor R. And you have another capacitor here. And just for the heck of it, let's throw in another inductor here. And then you have another resistor here, a capacitor here. And then finally, you have your load, which is which is just some, we'll just model that as some R's, RL, which we're not even gonna talk about. You actually can simplify all of this into a single Thevenin equivalent. RS, and then you have RL, where all of this
is just packaged in. No, it's not R anymore. Sorry, it's Z. Where all of this is now just packaged into ZS because all of these things, right, are just going to add or subtract to reactances or resistances. And you can simply treat these once you get them into their into their J omega terms as just being something that's in series or, or in parallel. And just like you would deal with resistors and you add them up or deal with them in parallel, you can do the same thing with complex impedance and thus get a Thevenin equivalent that just gives you everything bottled up into this nice, nice neat little thing because that is the equivalence. That's what this entire thing boils down to. So all the complexity of the circuit comes into one little component that has some resistance, some reactance, and that's it. And then with that simplicity, you can now model things like impedance mismatch, power transfer, uh, overall current flow, all the things that you want to do. Heck, if you wanted to, you could then combine these two, right, into just one final Z total. And that will define the final circuit. That may or may not be something useful to do. But you could do it because, again, it's all the same. If you're just dealing with these passive components of resistors, capacitors, and inductors, you can always simplify it down to just one final impedance. And that's through approaches like the Thevenin equivalent.